Oh man, anime is long and my attention span is short. If only there was a way to have the distilled essence of an anime with a bunch of memes sprinkled in to keep my attention on the monitor. Oh, what's this? A YouTube video doing exactly that? Hmm, let's have a look. But first, a message from today's sponsor. If I had one! Whoa, look at that title. That's a light novel adaptation, alright? Jobless Reincarnation. Isenkai. We know what Isekais are. Usually a male loner, a male loser, whatever you want, gets run over by a truck. We know the drill, so what's the quirk? Is it a special ability that no one else has done so far? Is it painfully unfunny? No, it's that our main protagonist has the ultimate disguise to avoid Chris Hansen. I'll get to that in a bit. For real though, he was born with all his memories still intact and the mind of a 34 year old inside of a newborn baby. His new parents in this new world call him Rodeus, and while they seem quite oblivious to who he actually is, their maid is freaked out by the behavior of her master's child, you know, on the account of it acting like a 34 year old porn addict. And as if all of this wasn't enough, Rudy finds out that his dad is a katana wielding neckbeard. He decides to do the only sensible thing after such a revelation and smashes his head right against the stone plates on the floor. His mother then picks him up and magically heals him, revealing that she is in fact Mercy from Overwatch and both these worlds are interconnected. This, understandably, gets Rudy so excited that he pisses himself on the floor. While you might think now that Rudy is a fucking idiot, he also is very understanding, and he knows that the writer's job is quite the tough one and time skips are hard, so he does nothing but the same magic trick filling buckets upon buckets with water for an entire year not leaving the house. The rest of the episode is just the magic tutor that his parents got Rudy, explaining the magic system to both Rudy and the viewer. But honestly, like in a pen and paper, I didn't pay attention to it just to ask the game master over and over and over again if we can use the magic to make his homebrew any fun. Promising to try for real in this life, our protagonist Rudy makes it to episode 2. Comfortably sandwiched somewhere in between indecent exposure to a child, sexual harassment, and camera stares that'll make you feel boogie. <laughs> Which in my honest to god opinion is the worst one of these three. This episode tells the wholesome story of Master Roxy teaching Rudy the ways of the mage in the backyard. The backyard which Rudy has not left in five years because of his small penis. Oh and I guess his dad still wants to convince him that swords are cool and not something for absolute neckbeards. Mmm, so good and tasty. So Rudy and his master go into a field to deep fry a fucking horse for no reason. And she gives him a pretty cool stick. So the most ultrasounding intro ever plays, and episode 4 starts with Rudy saving a quote unquote gorgeous looking <clears throat> boy. Are you fucking blind? You can't see me! From being bullied by other children, and as being such a good son in general that it leads to domestic violence. <laughs> Being convinced that Sylphiette is a boy, Rudy commits multiple felonies with his dirty little hands while taking a bath with her. But don't worry, this is the first and last time sexual assaults occurs in this anime. On accident. This by the way is the Chris Hansen disguise I was referring to earlier. Sylphiette is 5, Rudy is technically 34. But we're gonna have to deal with all of this later, because first, episode 4 hits. And episode 4 really asks those hard-hitting, deep moral questions. While what Rudy is doing is quite obviously morally wrong, this right here is quite a doozy. Okay, stay with me. Stay with me here. So, Paul cheats on Mercy, right? Mercy is freshly pregnant, right? And it turns out that it was their maid, Lily, that lived with them for years and has always cared for them uh, with boundless dedication, is the woman that uh, Paul cheated on his wife with. Now, it turns out she is pregnant too. Now, here, here comes the dilemma. Are you still are, are you paying attention? Okay. Mercy has to decide whether or not to indirectly sentence both Lily and her innocent unborn child to death by freezing or mutilation by monsters or both. Don't worry, I'll give you a little bit of time to think. Alright, time's up. The correct answer is, of course, option C. Make up rape allegations against your own father. <laughs> huh? So with this problem out of the way, the episode follows the only logical sequence of events, and Paul yeets his own son across the front yard to then horny bonk him into another universe. Rudy wakes up in a carriage with a mentally unstable fox woman, who is supposed to escort him to related royalty for whom he is to work as a teacher. Look, I know there's like 50 minutes of plot between those two scenes, but honestly, they make just as much sense back to back, so why bother? Episode 5. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 6 features even more domestic violence A 
body has been discovered! What is essentially animal people blackface? Well, on second thought, I think this is closer to what people do with their eyes to make racist jokes about Europeans. And the most important lesson of all, math is cool. Yeah, nice try, Professor Miller, I'm not studying for that shit. I'm a YouTube sensation now. Oh, and I guess there's this floating island now, which hints at an overarching plot, and... Look, don't get me wrong, I'm more than hyped for greater plot after, like, six episodes of world building. But do you know what I really need? What I really, really, really need? I really need another scene of Rudy inappropriately touching a minor and the single digits. Ah, now there it is. S-tier entertainment. Bonus points for her being a relative of his. By now, we are on episode 7. It's Eris' 10th birthday and yay, everyone do the party. Not really important. What is important is that Rudios has the immense character development that he learns that sleeping 10-year-olds can't consent. Pork champ, you are morally superior to oh, probably like half the e-celebs and pretty much every Discord mod. If you wait three more years, you just might beat EDP 445 as well. I cannot wait until season 2 where he learns that racially motivated homicides is generally frowned upon for good reason. Keep it up, Rudy. The ADL is proud of you. Also in this episode, it's confirmed that the world of Jobless Reincarnation not only crosses over with the world of Overwatch, but also with Super Mario Galaxy. <laughs> Which, yes, does mean that Lord Saurus Boreas Greyrat is a weaker and less handsome version of Waluigi. Now I get the plot is getting kind of confusing at this point, but you know, just trust episode 8 to clear it all up. So, um, uh, let me see here, uh, oh yeah, Rudy cries at his 10th birthday party, which leads to a declaration of war in a drunken rage. Eris' mother is going from despising Rudy to offering him adoption, to offering him her daughter as a wife, to the father of Eris actually fucking, and I mean actually fucking for real, Getting a 10 year old sloshed in order to have him agree to be a pawn in a coup d'etat between relatives in exchange for free reign over his 12 year old daughter without her consent. <laughs> huh? In the second half of the episode, however, Rudy gets a cooler stick. I mean, the, the stick he had before was pretty cool, but I mean, look at this stick. It's a pretty, pretty sick stick, dude. If I found something like this in the forest, you know 8 year old me would have just taken it with me. Damn. Sorry, where's the plot at? I don't know. Rudy doesn't either. The writers don't either. So, I don't know how we ended up in this mess. No one does, alright? The writers do the sensible thing though, and they explode the fucking sky to teleport him out of this train wreck. You know what? I can respect that. Let's start over, okay? Next episode. After talking to the whitest man alive. Bitch, you guys joking. You gonna make a little video about it? And say, oh, the M word, right? Who orders him to help the man who he will wake up next to. Rudy discovers that said man is a superb race of demons who are stigmatized and known for being vicious beasts that kill and maim indiscriminately. Now, now, what Rudy might lack in sexual ethics, he makes up for in humanism, as he stands above this petty racism the superb are subjected to. But do you know who doesn't? Me. So here's the joke about the superb's appearance. Nothing! NOTHING! Now let's see the diamonds! ICE! While initially started, he decided to greet the man instead of seeking confrontation. But of course, his oh god I hope not future cousin wife Eris is also teleported to the same place by the power of the Habsburg Chin, who in contrast to Rudy is more than ready to yell all the racial slurs at the superb, like a Karen being told to put a mask on by someone with more melanin in their blood. But of course, Eris is quick to learn that racism, very bad, and quickly too becomes friends with Ruji. Rudy, Richard, Richard, Richard. They dig around the landscape for a little bit before arriving at Roxy's birth village, where telepathy turns out to be just as awkward as I always imagined. Rudy finds out the true story behind the superb. They committed genocide, followed by auto genocide, killing and maiming indiscriminately. Wait, hold on. So everyone's fear of the superb is justified after all. Well, then again, I guess no one should suffer for the actions of their ancestors that much. Uh, wait, no, never mind. He was actually present in the whole massacre. He, in fact, killed his own son during that whole thing. Well, then, 
Well then, how in the fuck is any of this unjustified prejudice? You're literally a mass murderer. I don't- wait, okay, oh, oh, okay, he was possessed by a spear or something, of course. Yeah, I don't think that defense flies, my guy. What's next? Dylan Klebold was possessed by his tech nine. He's innocent, I swear. For real though, Rogers actually wants to repent for his past actions, starting with bringing these two kids safely back home. So, with his hair dyed blue to disguise his superb self, he safely leads the kids into a city, where his first action after signing up himself and the kids to an adventurer guild is straight up fucking game ending a small time criminal over a stolen puma. Baby steps, Raymond. Baby steps. Being the morally spotless gentleman that Rudy is, he convinces Robert that murder is in fact bad. Having learned from this experience, they take up the next job. Rudy rolls a one in initiative and everyone fucking dies. Oh my God. He, he didn't stand a chance. Roderick... <laughs> Roderick strangles Bojack Meth Horse. <laughs> Roderick strangles Bojack Meth Horse to death after revealing that he was never sponsored by the blue and orange Gatorade, but instead was sponsored by the Mountain Dew Gamer Fuel all along, causing a citywide prejudice fueled panic. This, of course, teaches us the most important of all lessons that us gamers are truly the most oppressed people. All in all, jobless reincarnation? Mm. 8 out of 10, about as much more integrity as the Bible. Thank you so much for watching, uh, I hope you enjoyed, if you did, you know, destroy that like button, annihilate the subscribe button. Next video might take a while because the joke in the video about being two weeks behind on uni is actually true because I've only been working on this video and not university at all, so I gotta catch up a little bit. Uh, thank you so much for watching, um, have a good one. Uh. Look at this dude. <laughs>